Get everyone, Viv here, hope you're all keeping well. It's time to get on and paint this uh, piece of scenery because the others are all ready for the next step and I kind of want this one to be at the same stage. So um, first step is to paint this black. Going to use an airbrush. Um, you could use a cheap one. I'm using my Badger Anthem uh, with one of these little uh, bottles at the bottom. We'll hook that on there and we'll spray it. We'll be done in a couple of minutes. Let's get that done. Right here, so this paint in here is just some black, uh, regular f uh, flat black matte. Uh, uh, wall paint from uh, Torbman's, it's Easy Coat Walls, it's the black base color. Uh, about 50-50 with water and a squirt of some flow medium. So shake this up, add it into this bottle. That's going to be heaps for us. Plug this into our airbrush and uh, spray it. Super simple. Would you believe it, my air compressors just died. So I got a couple of years out of that one. But uh, we're off to go buy a new one. Are we darling? Yeah, new air compressor for Viv. So here we go, almost done. So as I mentioned, I've got uh, my Badger here. This is a Badger Anthem. It sprays quite a, a wide cone. And I've got my compressor kicked all the way up. There you go, you'll hear it kick back in. So, um, it's going down quite quickly. And, and we're done. We just wait for this now to dry and uh, we'll move on with uh, four different colours of grey and it'll be painted ready for basing. So here are our four colours of grey that we're going to use. Uh, as you can see, obviously from dark grey to light grey. Um, I can't remember the paint brands, but I'll look them up in a minute. Um, dark Silhouette, Heavy Metal, Tabloid, and uh, Cold Metal. So you can see that this is almost a white here. There's our, our white paint, just for comparison. Very, very close. So I've already mixed these up into uh, jars. Again, about 50-50 with a little bit of, uh, of our flow medium that I talked about the other night from uh, Joe Sonia. You could use a, and really any brand of flow medium. You could also get um, mediums that are specifically designed for thinning down paints for airbrushes, but uh, this is what I've got on hand and it seems to work fine. So um, we're going to uh, use our little uh, siphon bottles with our uh, suction fed uh, airbrush, the, uh, the Badger Anthem, uh, for the first two colours and then the, the other colours we'll use uh, just the small little uh, cup for the airbrush uh, because we only need very small amounts of paint. So let's get cracking with that. So same deal, uh, we're just going to apply this base, uh, the base colour, the, the, the deepest shade of grey to the entire model and um, you, should, you should always work with an airbrush in a well ventilated area, preferably with an extraction fan which I don't have here but I'm in a very large warehouse and uh, uh, I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. But uh, for your safety, you should either be wearing a respirator, ideally wearing a respirator, as well as having an extraction fan. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish off this model, and we'll come back once I'm almost done. Okay, so we're almost done. None of this is rocket science, especially this first couple of stages. We're just basically spraying the entire model with paint. We don't need to worry about any angles or anything like that. When we're painting scenery like this, it's very different than, um, than painting miniatures where you might be trying to get uh, different angles to uh, give different sort of effects and all that sort of stuff. Uh, almost out of paint. We had just enough in this bottle. There we go. So we're going to let that dry. Not much of a difference, I don't know if you can see on camera, there's not much of a difference between the black and this grey, but uh, in person you can certainly tell the difference. Uh, I start with the black undercoat, just to help uh, give a better coverage for any spots that perhaps we might miss with this one. There we go, on to the next stage. Okay, on with the next step. I just thought I'd show you, I don't know if you can see, this is a 22 milliliter jar, a 22 cc jar, cubic centimeters, 22 mils. And I've probably got around 10 milliliters of paint for the second layer. So just want to show you how much paint we're actually going to use to do this next step. Okay, so it's pretty much the same deal except 
and now I want to start being a little bit careful about what I spray. So it's a little bit lighter. I've turned the pressure down a little bit. We do want to fill most of the, the model, but not everything. So you might have been able to see how I've sort of been trying to give the whole model a cover and then concentrating on the inside of the, of the panels, the centre of the panels, just to make them stand out a little bit. And you can sort of see that in the image there. So let's do the other side. So we missed the whole model first and then come back and try and focus on the inside of the panel. And that's all we're doing. So I'll finish this off and we'll come back with the next layer in a minute. So we're almost finished with this layer. And just for reference, I've probably used, oh uh, yeah, almost all of this bottle. Um, so that's around 10 milliliters of paint. And if you're buying a house paint in a two litres or four litre uh, tins, then um, that's really sort of quite economical. So ten, around 10 millilitres of paint um, to do this layer here. And um, again, misting the whole model and then just concentrating on the insides of the, the panels. Okay, our third layer. Like I said, I'm just going to use the cup in the airbrush rather than uh, one of the little siphon bottles um, because we don't need a lot for this. I've got way too much paint in here. I'm not going to need all of that but I can tip it out. So again starting on this side where we were before same sort of deal. I'm just going to miss the whole model and then concentrate on the interior of the panels. I don't know if you noticed, for the buttresses, I didn't go all the way to the bottom, I started about three quarters of the way up. And um, as we get to the top, you want a, a slightly... more intense colour at the top. So, fairly intense at the top. And then just picking out the panels. So we get a nice sort of transition between the colors. Again with the buttresses we just want to try and hit the edges rather than going all the way in uh, into the wall uh, where, where it joins. There we go, so I'll finish off the rest of the model and we'll come back in a minute. So there we go, I've uh, done the whole model with the third layer of grey and just for reference, that's how much paint I've got left in the cup. Um, you only really need just a very, very small amount. Uh, so I'm going to tip this back into my uh, little jar here and we'll get on with the next step. Right, oh, our final colour. A very small amount of paint in the, in the cup. This time we really want to be very careful, so uh, not a lot of paint coming out of the airbrush, just trying to touch the highlights, so around the top, top half of the buttresses, both on the outside and on the inside. Now with our panels, very light dust. And then again, trying to focus on the centre of the panels. We want a, a, a sort of a wide spray, but not, 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 not too much. And 
And that's about it. So again, just our top edges. Our buttress is about halfway up. Very light dust. Pick out these cross beams. Very light dust and then just a little bit on the center of the panels. And that's about it. I'll go through and finish the rest of the model and we'll come back. Oh, actually, before I do that, I'll point out the, uh, the tiles here. So same deal with the tiles. We want to have just a very light dust. And then very carefully, pick out the center of the tiles. This is where having a dual action airbrush really helps. Uh, you can keep your, your air down and then just uh, rock back for paint just ever so slightly when you need it. So I'm going to finish the rest of the model and we'll come back. Okay, our model is done. So far I've been doing the rocks as well, except for the last stage. Uh, I'll dry brush those in our, in our high, highest colour in just a minute. First we're going to do the base. So I've got my uh, reddish brown colour and uh, we're just going to go around and Now, I'm not too worried at this point about any of this colour splashing up the overspray on the bottom of the building. That's going to give us the impression that uh, dirt has been uh, flying up there, so uh, the overspray is unavoidable unless you mask everything off, but I'm not too fussed about it. So there's the overspray. Like I said, I'm not too worried about it, um, because it's going to help the building blend into the base anyway. So there we go, there's our model done, ready to be uh, flocked. You could leave it at this stage and it would look perfectly good. Um, I'm not going to flock it in this video because I need to uh, let that base dry and then I need to uh, um, weather up the model so it matches everything else. But you could leave it like that, apply some uh, green grass or whatever. Oh, one thing I forgot, all these little bits of uh, rubble on the building. We just want to gently touch those as well, just gently. Again, this is where having a dual action airbrush comes in handy. A single action airbrush when you push down on the trigger, air and paint come out. A dual action airbrush when you push down on the trigger, air comes out. And when you rock back on the trigger, paint comes out. So that way you can only pull back on the trigger just a very small amount. And you can control the amount of paint that's coming out of your brush. These days there's... Uh, not a lot of difference in price between a dual action airbrush and a, a single action airbrush. So there we go, aside from touching up our rocks and giving them a dry brush, our model is, uh, is pretty much finished. Uh, at this stage, um, I'd call that done. What I would do is I'd get some uh, matte sealer or I'd spray this whole thing with some watered down PVA just to help uh, uh, sort of preserve some of the texture that's on here. Otherwise that will chip over time. But uh, there we go. Nice and easy. Um, and I think it comes up a treat. Thanks for watching. See ya.